Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for season three of what is now the discussion series of Our Midnight Cake. Beaches, Lumberdor, Doug, and I will continue to bring you fun weekly conversations covering all different kinds of movies, TV shows, and whatever else we find interesting at the time. It's going to be a great year, and whatever happens, we'll probably be laughing about it. So let's get started. I'm Soltis, and joining me are my friends and fellow transdimensional beings, Lumberdor. If you smell what The Rock is cooking, WB certainly didn't. <laughs> and Doug. You know, I mean, this movie was okay, but I'm really disappointed that they didn't work in a Vin Diesel cameo. It's really pulling for it. Beaches should be joining us later on once he has finished whatever Beaches business with which he is occupied. To start off our third season of discussions, we thought Dwayne Johnson's latest flopped vanity project, Black Adam, would be fun. In the movie, an ancient superhuman is released from magical timeout and eventually fights a CGI demon. Also, a crime syndicate called Intergang is there until the movie forgets it's a thing. One of the draws for this film was the appearance of Henry Cavill as Superman, and unfortunately it amounted to about five seconds and for what will probably be the last time. And that's a whole discussion in and of itself. Black Adam was directed by Jaume Couillet Serre, who also directed Johnson in the 2012 Pirates of the Caribbean reskin Jungle Cruise. Now, there was some controversy surrounding the production due to Dwayne Johnson allegedly, knowingly, sharing false information regarding the financial success of the movie. He came out saying, oh, look at this, we're doing so well and we've made all this money. The film actually lost a ton of money between 50 and $100 million, and the sequel will not be part of the new DC movies moving forward. Unfortunately, the awkward and incoherent B-movie level screenplay and dialogue written by Adam Steichel stand in stark contrast to some fun visuals and some decent performances. If you enjoy our discussions and would like to contribute or get in contact with us, consider visiting our website at OurMidnightCake.com, liking, subscribing, and sharing the transmission with your friends. Be sure to join us next week for a conversation of The Northman. Okay, so Black Adam. In my mind, DC's latest attempt to capitalize on the MCU's failures. That's their attempt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, it it feels like I was trying to think about this movie feels like like a throwback. Can you have a throwback to the early days of superhero movies? Are we that deep in? Well, to me, like they really tried to capitalize like what worked for Shazam, but then they didn't stay with their own game plan at times. I got the sense that the director really wanted to do a James Gunn film, but mm. didn't know how to do it. Yes. Interesting. All of the various music selections, some of the way that the shots were blocked and, and set up, how the characters would talk to one another. The way they interacted with one another. That's totally what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah. It was almost, this movie was almost more like, I guess it felt more like a throwback in a sense of like, it's just like, let's have a few big action pieces and let's have the characters interact in a way that's just like, I don't know, kind of a fun and simple camaraderie kind of, you know, because I feel like that the individual actors did well and there was like interesting stuff with the characters and, and there's some kind of cool sequences. But overall, I don't know, there's some cohesion that was missing, maybe. But look, every DC movie is almost an attempt to get the DC universe started. It is. They can't quite get it going. That's another thing I thought watching this is it seemed like disconnected from the others. I mean, from yeah. what this is me on the outside looking in. But I mean, of course, until the post credit scene, which might not even be a thing anymore. <laughs> Oh, no. Aside from <laughs> That's that, the thing that bugs me the most separate. about this, I think, is like I I enjoyed the movie for what it was. I enjoyed <laughs> the connections that they tried to make to the Shazam universe and to other things. But they've got a lot of real possibilities there with connecting Shazam and Superman. And it doesn't seem like that's going to happen at all, which is very disappointing to me because I feel like the Superman character within the DC universe is really good. And I really like the Shazam character and these three connecting, I think could make for a good movie. Oh man. I could not okay. believe when it came out that Henry Cavill would not be Superman. Yeah. 
yeah, that's that's the thing. But, like the guy was born to play Superman. He's fantastic. He hasn't, yes, he's perfect. He hasn't yeah. been in a good Superman movie, but no. If no, I did given, like Man of Steel, but the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah but that's me. If he's given the right script and everything, it, it, it would be fantastic. See, that's the thing I don't understand. Like, mm. they've got good actors for all of these characters. I'm torn on this movie because I had fun watching it, but it's not a good movie. Mm-hmm. See, that's me too. Mm-hmm. Like The plot mm-hmm. can be, I think I texted this to you guys, that the, the plot can be summarized by the questions why and how yeah oh, i did not understand this movie i think is what i said to you guys i don't understand this. well the thing with like the kid and and the rocks character like oh that stupid skateboarder kid wait did you i think you meant to say cool skateboarder kid oh the kid was so was annoying skating. i could not i kept hoping that somebody would shoot him in the face that almost happened but the rock saved him a couple of times Darn it, Rock, why are you in us now? You're not supposed but to be the, a hero. You said so like, many times get, you're not a hero. <laughs> I just let the kid die. I get right. the, uh, them trying to pull in the Shazam stuff, but that's how the characters formed. But I think they tried to pull too much in with that kid in his comparison to the Shazam character and his friend. That worked because they were both kids. They were helping each other out, helping this other person grow to become a hero. Where you didn't have that with this character. What's the? I'm just gonna ask it because I don't know the DC. What is the? What is the Wizards and Shazam? Like what is going on? It's it's some. That, I don't know how to explain. There's of wizards. wizards. Yeah, there, it's, there it's are like, wizards. I mean, what? There's magic. I don't. Yes, it's there a magic. magic. Wizard. Superman's an alien. Council. Batman's right. just like a bro. Mechanic bro. Aquaman's, I guess, Billion a demigod. Bro. No, yeah. Aquaman is more. And then Shazam's bro like than Batman. <laughs> Okay. Rose like Rose Rose And then Shazam's like wizards like give you magic powers. I don't so. Yes. Yep. And then that's like because that's the as thing I was watching this I'm movie. Aware. And like you sold this, you know, I had fun because the characters are cool and there's some cool action. And so it's like kind of fun to watch. But then I'm sitting back like, why did Satan show up? I don't understand why Satan's here. or how the weird airplane was able to scan for demonic energy and identify the demons by name what what is (laughs) i mean if they if they've got that kind of technology where's that holy crap and then what is i even was like what is the justice society where's the justice league they disbanded i I don't know why are you sending in the b team i I was like pierce superman's gonna fight him oh i mean (laughs) dr fate was fantastic he's my favorite character in the movie and he was super cool, actually. <laughs> I, I wish there was more of him and no, more I enjoyed with that, you know. And I enjoyed even the dynamic between him and um, was it Hawkman? Is that mm-hmm. his? yes? I thought that they were good together and they kind of hinted at like there's some kind of like history or bond with them, but they do. I want to see that movie, but they don't do a lot with it, too. I exactly, I thought that they were, and that's the thing like the actors in this were great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And I enjoy their conflicting views on justice and how to go about their job. Yep. Yeah, like that was kind of interesting, fun. right? That was mm-hmm. almost like something deeper than the surface level fun it was kind of there, but they didn't they didn't go into it really. Even um what was her name? Cyclone mm-hmm. and uh, Adam Smasher, like them as like the newbies, like they kind of had a cool kind of dynamic too that was kind of fun. Um, and these are like Cyclone and Doctor Fate, well, like these are characters I've been looking forward to seeing them on the screen yeah, for a to long see time because they're interesting. Yeah. One interesting looking characters, but in design, but just to seeing their stories finally kind of portrayed, they're all kind of just halfway there enough for to get mm. the characters on screen with cheap actiony punchlines is what I felt like. Yeah, they really don't do a whole lot to capitalize on it's like all surface the level wealth of character that they mm-hmm. are. It really felt like a bad 80s <laughs> action movie. You know what Sur- I'm saying? Surface level. The structure is not there for the movie. It, it doesn't mm-hmm. have a, mm-hmm. a good foundation upon which to tell the story. It yeah. starts off with a massive exposition dump through narration that turns out to be misleading. It's not even true. <laughs> yeah. Eternium. And Wait, then, isn't that what's in He-Man? To... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's this whole thing about a demon crown that the villain needs to make to 
destroy the world really for some weird. reason and it's made out of eternium and eternium is a magical metal that's only found in Kondok. and the king enslaved his own people to dig for the eternium and their reward for finding eternium was getting murdered you find the eternium you just bury it again and let someone else deal with it and let someone else find it like it's in incredibly yeah that's that's ridiculous. the stuff that i was wondering like am i missing some lore am i missing some... so i wasn't it's just totally that random okay well that's yeah. the thing i don't yeah. know i don't know enough about the black like Adam satan's making them know. dig up minerals <laughs> to make a crown it was just the king uh this was pre-demon okay yeah this is this is right. pre-demon it's just the king and the king is there and he is an evil king and he's being evil and enslaving people and yeah i want the power of the six demon lords because i can somehow he's like i am that sick of the earth crown i want to destroy it and then we get to skateboard kid really? and his introduction to the story which was apparently an impromptu intervention with the checkpoint guard Yes. And his mom right. is a fugitive. <laughs> the fugitive is, uh, she was a teacher and now she's a fugitive oh. because intergang is evil and skateboard yes. kid. And she's Lara Croft, apparently, as well. Yes. So, yeah. It's like, and then in the end, she decides to face the undead demonic skeletons with a pipe. Yes, and her that and her works. brother. <laughs> yes. Boom. Who was shot <laughs> like five minutes earlier, but he's okay because he went through the magical nanobot stuff. Nanobot stuff. It's one thing after another. It's one thing after another. They've got interesting things here, but they're pulling. They're trying so heavy, heavily to tie in to the other parts of their universe. They didn't correctly create. That, oh, 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 yeah, that, that they didn't create. There, you, Sorry, I, yes, I didn't let you finish. That, <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah, it's that. It's They've got tie-ins to Shazam, and they've got tie-ins to all this other superhero stuff with the kid in his room. But again, it's more of punchlines that they're going after instead Ooh, of... look at the posters on his wall. Yeah, instead of... And oh, no. Black Adam destroyed the Superman poster. Be. Yeah. Uh-oh. And then sometimes it's like serious. It's like Black Adam's like, I'm not a hero. And he's like killing dudes. And then another scene is like he throws a guy to a certain death and he's like flying for yeah. forever in the background. And it's like played as a joke. And you're like, <laughs> it bothers me too because I know The Rock is a better actor than what he's being portrayed as here in stuff I've seen him in and just his wrestling career too. I don't know that that's true. I don't no, think he's a good that. actor. I. I understand the draw, and he's he has a magnetic. Well, he's personality. good as the Tooth Fairy. Okay, he was good as the Tooth Fairy. I would like to see him right. do something real, you know, he's, actually challenge ah, him other, as an actor, something dramatic, something other than comic bookish. It's kind of that Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, right? Yeah, similar. Only he's he's a better actor than Arnold Schwarzenegger. He is. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's going to be the new line on his. At the beginning of his IMDb bio, Hale is a better actor than Arnold Schwarzenegger by the Midnight Cake podcast. Yeah. <laughs> you can quote me on that. Yes. Better than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mostly because he can speak English. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after a knowing skateboard kid is introduced, skateboard kid lectures the intergang guard on neo-imperialism and stealing of resources, causing problems when he has to pass the checkpoint every day. None of these characters act how they should act in this situation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they also missed out on the opportunity for a Marty McFly pull me into town situation. So. Mm -hmm. Then you find out that Fugitive Mom has a little necklace that features Eternium, yep. and she gets grilled yes. about that. And it's okay that she has it because it's not refined, so it's not magic. I remember that in Harry Potter, you got to refine it first, you know. Oh, hey, here's speeches. Apparently there is this process of refining the Eternium that makes it magic. Yes. I want to know about that. <laughs> Wait, hmm? Wait, are we talking about He-Man? Yes. A little <laughs> bit. I made a He-Man joke. Yes. <laughs> mm. So what are your first impressions of Black Adam? Um, 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 
I don't know, because I've seen like three better movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, burn. I went into it hearing a lot of crap, and I think I was more entertained than I expected. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was the most intelligent thing I've ever seen, but um, I liked it. I think that's about where we landed generally, is that okay. it's not a good movie, but it was entertaining. Yeah, if we start to pick <laughs> yeah. it apart, we find all kinds of nonsense. Start to think about it But it was all. kind of fun. <laughs> it just falls yeah. apart. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was honestly like, I, I kind of, it's weird to say because I, I, well, I didn't, I don't think I loved it. I wish I had seen it at the theater because it's one of those that I think that's where I would have had the most fun with Probably it. Probably been more fun yeah. there. Yeah. There's a lot of spectacle for sure. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did enjoy Dr. Fate. I don't think they did as much with them as they could have, but yeah, I, I mean, you, it was just one of those where they in, introduced a ton of characters and and you really only got, uh, I guess, Black Adam's story in this one, which I'm fine with. It was his movie. Yeah, he is the titular character. Yeah, yeah. I do like the choice of uh, Pierce Brosnan for Dark oh, Fate. Awesome. That's, that's one that I had wondered a long time. If his character was ever on the big screen, who would play him? Excellent choice for that, yeah. Okay, let's get back to the plot, such as it is. Uh, they just rock up close to the mines in a van like where were the checkpoints for that if they just drive up the side of the mountain right by the mines Mm. there's no checkpoints for the international gang mining magic rocks they don't want to keep that secure how did inner gang take over kondak anyway that's not important right now it's not important other world governments they're just like they've got other superheroes magic wakanda guns i mean not wakanda what what's their magic material it's, the same thing. <laughs> it's, the it's same yes thing. glow aluminium whatever it is eternium 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 it's i i have the power um blue glowy stonium it's almost as if conduct doesn't make any sense no it makes sense it's what's happening in it it doesn't make conduct makes no sense what world governments <laughs> were aware of the magic rocks and conduct and wouldn't do and wouldn't move in on that i don't know these are but, things that should have been explained. Fugitive lady, some crazy how knows the location of the demon crown just outside where the inner gang has been mining their magic rocks and their huge operation. But the inner gang doesn't know about the demon crown. So they have to infiltrate fugitive ladies, ragtag group, discover the information that way somehow. Which is her group is just her brother and some other a guy who only two drives. other guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of which was a traitor. So yeah, and then surprise betrayal when close to the item of ultimate yes. power and the crown is out in the open for everyone to see. Evil guy is evil mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. betrays them. Just walk it's up so and grab good. It. It's so funny. I love it. It does have a bit of that like Raiders of the Lost Ark opening kind of like, oh, here's this treasure <laughs> that's in this place that wasn't that hard to get yeah. to that yeah. nobody's ever grabbed. You know? <laughs> And I don't even think there were any booby traps in this one were, were there. I no, no, no. Just... She just had to jump across these these rocks that were across from each other. It would have been out Very of my tricky. Reach. <laughs> Very tricky. And for convenience sake, the Black Adam is located in the same place that the crown is. <laughs> yes. Well done. Writing is hard. Yeah, I do like that the crown was just like there. <laughs> that was great. It looked like where they tombed or buried Black Adam. That was the same place as the Council of Wizard People. So, like, what happened to the Council? Like, that confused me. They weren't needed. No, I know, but it looks like they buried where the council originally met you're Lumber thinking Door, too hard you're, you're about a black story that wasn't <laughs> that fleshed out you're not supposed to worry about any of this stuff what you were supposed to do in that moment and just go hey, wasn't that that guy from Shazam <laughs> I did but I'm like who are these other set wizards? on this movie I don't he, know. he died <laughs> and Eternium can hurt Black Adam but it's okay because he can heal himself with lightning yes okay <laughs> There's not really a way to hurt that magic. guy, it seems like. No, there is one way, and it's when you CGI a skinny rock out of a realistic <laughs> rock body. That's how you hurt Black Adam, because that, that stand-in double hurt my soul. That was really my main problem with this movie, was the <laughs> rock's face on skinny dude's body. To me, it was a greater greater sin than Scorpion Rock. 
that was the thing I was kind of impressed here. I don't know about you guys. I was, I think I was actually surprised with that turn of the story. I was, I was surprised with the turn, but it was I don't know if this is CGI true to the, the comics, but I've, I've not read Black Adam. So, so no, all this was I'm new to going me. Completely off of what was presented to me in the movie. And I, I did that. not expect The Rock to be the skinny guy from the backstory. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But we get a ridiculous thing from Comic Relief Guy. He just puts on the demon crown while watching TV and eating chips, and it's fine. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> obviously, so, so obviously it poses no threat. He doesn't turn into right? Satan. Yeah. Like there's no reason to worry about this demon crown because it's fine. <laughs> seems like he would, though, you know. Yeah, it seems like it would, right? <laughs> he uh, it wasn't fully attached to his hand. It was just kind of <laughs> askew. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, was he didn't reason. put it on right. It may have been right. The yeah. crown was fitted. That's why it didn't. Uh, it was chosen. made for Work. small man's hands. Wasn't chosen. <laughs> and after Black Adam just started walking through walls because he literally was too dumb for the door, there. I guess. There's that conversation that he has with between himself, the boy, the fugitive mom, and the comic relief brother. Where there are like how many jump cuts in the in the scene of two minutes? As it's like sixty different jump cuts, they keep going back between each individual person over and over again. Well, the room was too small to actually do real shooting. I'm assuming that was a statement on the real estate situation in Kandahar or whatever the frick it was called. Kandahar. Kandahar. What was it called? Kandak. Kandak. Kanda waka waka Iraq. Kandahar is another. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did enjoy the one joke about. Um, you know, saying your catchphrase next time before you kill the guy. He thought to do it just after he let go. Of the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I, I got, I got that little joke. That was kind of nice. Well, but- I thought that was kind of interesting because I, I wonder if it was on purpose. I don't think it was, but you've got this guy who's within the context of the story. He's not a comedian. Uh, the, you know, this is not an Iron Man uh, type character. Mm-hmm. And when he does try to do a joke, it doesn't really quite land. Yeah. Because it wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's a man out of time. I like that he played it like that because I really kind of expected another sort of like an Iron Man or a Thor, you know, with just uh, one liners here and there. I did too, honestly, with just how good The Rock is. Comedic yeah, clean. he's usually pretty good with that stuff. I did expect um, more of that. But I do recall hearing all the stuff about him wanting, uh, you know, sort of a showdown with Superman event for Chile. And I think he really wanted this character to seem like he could kind of stand toe to toe with Superman. They pushed that hard. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think he could, but I no. don't know if we'll see. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to. I doubt it. You, you mean they watch too? Yes. Watch two. <laughs> Baywatch two. Baywatch two. Man on the beach. <laughs> Henry Cavill is a is a rival lifeguard. No, no. Wait a minute. Here's my question. Inner gang. Nope. Yes. Is it an international gang? <laughs> I forgot. That, that is are. exactly what it is. I sat there. Well, I sat there like inner gang, Interpol. <laughs> so Interpol's an international police. Is it an international gang? <laughs> it is. That's it. That's what Inner Gang stands for. I do recall there being some comparison to this and Moon Knight early on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'd st- I'd still much rather watch this than Moon Knight again. <laughs> oh man. I I enjoyed them both, so I'm in that camp of I did not ah. watch Moon Knight. There's no reason to. There's absolutely no reason to watch Moon Knight. Possibly. I think I'd rather go read the comics illustrated by the great Bill Sinkavich. That's what I would rather do. Yes, go read the comics for do sure. Do that, definitely. Years. The demon needs to sit on, the, or the bad guy needs to sit on the throne somehow. Because the throne needs, the throne a is sky now, beam. Uh, yeah, there's a sky beam with a throne. How does the ancient throne right. factor into it? You can't it's, have your generic demon there. plot without a sky beam. Um, or a throne. <laughs> <laughs> there is no Dana, only Zul. Oh my God, Doug! If if anything could have happened in Avatar that didn't happen, if that you know um, <laughs> lifeless Sigourney Weaver uh, Avatar could have woken up and said, "There is no whatever her character's name was." There's only, only Zul. Zul. 
Is this the new avatar you're speaking of? No, um, no. Well, actually, now that I've uh, seen it, yeah, I could, yeah, it, it, either one, yeah, either one. Beautiful. I was just thinking about how like how wacky the so dumb. throne looks. It's and, it's it's yeah. about an hour and a half too long for what the story it tells. <laughs> oh gosh, the story could be summed up in. You remember what happened in the last one? This one again with water. Yeah, this is what <laughs> we're doing that again. Remember that bad guy? It's the same bad guy. Same bad guy. Remember, yeah. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> Jake has kids. This one bad guy does too. You remember they? You remember they had to train train birds. Um, uh, this one, it's uh, water guys. <laughs> yeah, little Animals. dolphin dinosaurs. <laughs> How long cool. did James Cameron have to work on this thing? Thirteen years. He had thirteen oh my years God. to get it together. It's too long. You try training a dolphin and see how long it takes you. It was. It was. It's a it was. A it was. A it was such a pretty movie, and I'm so <laughs> no, glad I saw I it in 3D. I also uh, saw it in 3D. It was, yeah, it was a mean, fun experience. A lot of stunning visuals. It was I a little weird how it went from like uh, wasting. My it life went from like though. really great looking movie to almost like video game cutscenes here and there. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah, like the frame rate was all wonky. Back to black and, I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> we can we can substitute one terribly written movie for another. <laughs> it's, it's all the same criticism. <laughs> So again, Black Adam is not a great movie. It's a dumb Saturday afternoon popcorn movie that yes. if you can successfully turn off your brain and not think about anything that is happening, why or how or what's going on, and just enjoy the pretty colors on the screen, then you're going to have fun with it. Yeah. There's so much bad writing here. We could easily go for, what, eight, ten hours dissecting everything that doesn't make sense. Everything that happens in this movie is completely forgettable. If we hadn't discussed it, I, I think I just would have been like, that was fine, and then never watched it again and had a decent memory of Apparently, there's this mantra that a bad plan is better than no plan. That's ridiculous. Well, that's the DC motto, you know. <laughs> that's how they try to keep going. It's also how all these movies are made. DC <laughs> yes. cinematic that universe. That came straight from marketing, so they just went with bad it. Bad plan is better than no plan. <laughs> I killed Doug. That's what our producer said. Uh, <laughs> that's so we're just going to keep doing the, this, I the guess. Notes on every script. A bad plan is better than no plan.